recurrent ovarian cancer. Histologic subtype with mucinous, clear cell, and low-grade serous being unique. Mm -hmm. Platinum-free interval, okay? Number of lines of therapy, molecular signature, and the existing toxicities from the prior, prior lines. And that, that probably is what a, a consult would say, okay? And so, resectability. And, and Again, resect resectability. Resectability. Yeah, right. Okay. Leave this right on. So, <laughs> so there was at this, at this, let's do it, at resectability, at this meeting was a prospective phase three trial of secondary debulking. Rob, you have a big knife. <laughs> Tell me about this, what's called the desktop study. So, the, you know, I have to give credit. The desktop studies are a series of trials that have been done uh, in, in, in sequence to try to help us identify the patients and the merit of doing secondary debulking. There's no doubt about it, three of the four of us are surgeons here, that we look at that disease, you said you would cut out all the low grades. So we want to do it because we did it the first time and it worked. We took it out, gave them chemo, they did better. So there's been a lot of bias to that. The desktop trials were helping us to find out, first of all, was this prognostic if we could do it? Could we find a sub-cohort of patients, for instance, who had good surgical outcomes the first time, no ascites, and, and good, performance good performance status. And could, if you pick those patients, what was the likelihood you could give them to R0? Because that, in all of the retrospective study, and there's probably three dozen, maybe four, a dozen studies out there that retrospectively have shown that that's the case. So the desktop three trial was actually set up by the desktop one, two to find the patients. Best and the, patients. Best patients and to see if the surgery worked. And basically, the, you know, the primary endpoint of that trial and the, and, and the other one that's uh, ongoing to D213 was overall survival. So it was a little bit of a surprise. Because they presented PFS. They presented the secondary endpoint before the primary endpoint. Right, right. And so, and I guess it, because because we, I think a lot of us feel that um, a PFS endpoint for a situation like this would obviously be impacted if you cut out the disease as opposed to not. And, but, and, but again, the real endpoint for here is overall survival. And we're cherry picking the most operably, uh, operable okay. patients who There's are also the wrong. most chemosensitive patients. There's nothing wrong with picking the right patient to operate on. No, no, no. I'm, what I'm saying is that <laughs> they're also the right, the right patient for chemotherapy. And despite the weaknesses that you point out that they're reporting PFS before OS, is a, which was the primary endpoint, I think it's, I think it's worthwhile reporting because it could have been the other way around. Yep. We could have had no improvement in PFS, that saying that, very, that very basically suspicious. systemic progression would have taken over even despite chasing it locally right. with surgery. So I think selecting the right patients, the indications are key. We already knew that. So right. it's really confirming what we're doing anyway right, right now right. is that we are doing well, we'll secondary see, debulking. Well, we'll see, in the setting of no randomized mature yeah. data. Which we didn't of, have. Of second, right. Does this change your practice, Matt, of secondary debulking? I would say it was in line with my practice to begin with that okay. I was quite selective on who I reoperate okay. on. I know there's some centers in the country that'll reoperate on almost everybody because nobody is as good a surgeons as they were. Bigger knife. Uh, bigger <laughs> knife, as you said. But this time to first subsequent therapy that they looked at in this right. trial was seven months longer in the patients they operated on, got their adjuvant chemotherapy afterwards, seven months later before they had to start the next regimen as compared to the group that didn't undergo yeah, surgery. But Matthew, well. you, yeah. you base your decision on secondary debulking on different criteria, right? They right. used the so-called AGO criteria, right. Right. which they defined in desktop one and two, which if I'm correct was uh, no ascites or less than 500, right. optimal debulking at the initial surgery. Complete, complete resection. Complete resection. First, complete surgery. resection. Yeah. Surgery. We and don't good, do that. And good performance. And right. good performance. I, but I would status. say I somewhat do, do those okay. things. I mean, yeah. I, you do so, that, you know, I if you it was carcinomatosis to begin with, it's probably going to be carcinomatosis now. Yeah. You couldn't so, get right. it out the first time. Yeah. That's You're right. not going to get it out it's the right. second time. So, so, that does bring up one really important finding from the study. So, from on the positive side of things, there has been this thought that with the same thing with frontline therapy, that there's an incremental benefit with more, more you, that you take out. So in other words, if you leave a lot, they don't do so well. If you leave nothing, they do really well, and there's something in between. Right. And so what they showed in this study, which had also been previously reported, was that it's really only the R0 patients that, that benefit. So the criteria to maximize the R0 patients, that was the key, and, and they proved that they could do yeah. it.